Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Well, guess what? How many got here by a vehicle today? Okay, good. Every single one of us today got here by some form of vehicle, whether it was a car, a bus, a train, um, or a bicycle. You know what? I love riding. Anybody like riding here? At the 8 a.m. service, I literally jumped off the stage, off the stairs. It went well, but it was a little scary. So at this service, I said, you know, Marisa, you need to use a little bit more wisdom. But anyways, I, I'm the kind of person that loves, 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 loves to ride. And every single one of us have to understand that in life, in life, you are all going on a destination. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. You are on the path to hopefully life and blessing, uh, of course, filled with challenges as well. You can't think that you're not going to go through life and not be challenged. But there's a verse in the Bible in Psalms chapter 1. We're going to take it all the way back to chapter 1. Look at this on the screens. It says, um, for the Lord watches. Everybody say watches. Look at this. For the Lord watches over the path of the what? So check this out. Every single day when you choose to live for God, when you choose God, God is on your path. God is watching your path. God is protecting you on your path. God will provide for you on your path. God will do amazing miracles on your path. And I love it once again because he says, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly. Now, I'm riding my bike today because you know what? Um, a few years ago, I was in, uh, maybe about two years ago, three years ago, I was in Colorado in the mountains. And when I was in the mountains, it was the most coolest thing because it wasn't just riding in the mountains. It was riding in the mountains with snow. So it was, it was pouring snow, and the road was snow, and the, uh, the path was pretty narrow. It was so narrow that my son Isaac, who I took with me, got freaked out because, you know what, one wrong turn, and you can go right off the cliff. And, uh, but at the end of this road, when we got to uh, this fork, we had to make a decision. We had to make a decision, dang, do I go right or do I go left? And I think many of us in the last, you know what, seven months, can you believe we're already in July? In the last seven months, you can look at your life right now. You can look at whatever you're going through right now. And, and, and if you're mature, if you're developing yourself spiritually, you have to ask yourself, how did I get here right now? Why am I in this place? I'll tell you why. Because every single one of us have chosen a path. There's a path that leads to life with God, and then there's a path that leads to destruction. Let's look at the, the, the other part of this verse. Look at this. He says, um, verse 6 of 1, he says, but the path of the wicked leads to what? Okay, so check this out. So aren't you glad? That God already has a path for you and me. He already has a path for prosperity. He already has a path for health. He already has a path uh, for your children to do amazing in school. He already has a path for your marriage. He already has a path for your life. God has a path for your success. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get us to the place to, to today where we understand that Maybe where you're at right now is not necessarily the devil. It's not necessarily your spouse. It's not necessarily your kids. But just maybe, it's maybe the path that you and I have maybe chosen this year that has got us in the place of maybe anxiety, oppression. Maybe right now you're in the path of of, of some pretty messed up health issues. But in reality, you have to be honest with yourself. I, 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 instead of blaming the devil and thinking that, that this was my lot in life, maybe it was the choices we made of what we were eating that weren't as healthy as it should be. And then now you got this report that you've developed diabetes. Come on, you're at the restaurant. You're looking at the menu. You see the double-double cheeseburger, and you see the salad right next to each other right 
And, and of course, you're just like that, that internal battle, right? That battle between the spirit and the flesh. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing to eat the salad, but the flesh is like, but man, okay. And then at the end of the time of looking at that menu, you say, okay, I'll take the double-double, but hold the bacon. No bacon. And then we just call that healthy, right? And so the reality and the truth is this, is that right now, wherever you are at in this life right now, and I'm talking about this moment, this year, because we got five months left, and you still have an opportunity to change your path. You still have an opportunity to change your course. You may be at the fork road right now, and God is giving you another option. You know what the Bible says? Today I set before you life and death blessings and cursings aren't you glad that god is not a god who will force you to take his path god doesn't force paths on anyone god gives people the right path the righteous path but then god also exposes that there is a path called destruction and that path is not very healthy it's not very good but at the end of the day you have to make a decision on which one i'm going to take so once again psalms 160 says, but the path of the wicked so he starts with the path of the righteous and then there's the path of the wicked now i don't think anyone here likes to be called wicked and i don't think david was calling anyone wicked either but he was calling that destructive path wicked it's the path called wicked and so many of us, without really intentionally trying to take that path, end up in that path. One day we wake up and we realize, how did I get so far off the path? How did I get so far off from being right with God? How did I get so far off, uh, you know, from, from my family or from my, my friendships, uh, the people that care about me. How did I get so far off? Well, if you read all through Psalms, he says there's two types of path, righteous path, wicked path. And we've all been on both, guys. There's no one here that has not been through the path of wickedness. We've all been there at some point in our life. And there are some in this room right now that are on the path of righteousness. And there are some people in this room that are on the path of wickedness. And once again, it's not that you're a wicked person. It's just that we choose to take the wrong path called wicked. And so I want you to stay tuned in with me today because I believe you're going to go ahead and get something out of it. Now, what does the path of wickedness look like? The path of wicked basically leads you into bad relationships. Let's start with that one. You already know that you shouldn't be hanging out with a specific group of people. Let's just say you have friends that have an alcohol problem. You've been delivered from alcohol. But for whatever reason, you're like, well, I'm strong enough now. I'm good. I can handle it. And you go out and you hang with them, and they're still partying like it's 1999. Man, they're, they're going ahead, and they're pounding it. They're doing their thing. And before you know it, come on, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Huh? It doesn't take a lot to leaven it up. And all of a sudden, it just goes from, all right, I'll just take a sip, from one sip to five sips, from five sips to one can, from one can to one bottle, from one bottle to, and then we just keep progressing. And how did we get there? Well, let me tell you something. We got there because we started taking the path, not only the wicked path, but we started taking the path with the wrong people. So there's the path of wrong relationships. Now, it's not that those people are the devil. It's just that everyone can be influenced by something. And so there's that path. Then there's the path that leads you to financial struggle. It's amazing how many times I talk to people, and uh, they'll tell me something like, man, oh, my God, you're not going to believe what happened to me. Man, uh, this, this, this bill came in for this amount, or, or my car broke down, and it, it's like $5,000. And I, I, I don't like to ask people this, but I have to when, when I know you, like know you, know you. And the first question I ask is this, hey, man, are you tithing? And, and you know why? Because I know that tithing is what keeps me on the path of protection. Tithing keeps me under God's plan and umbrella of protection from, from the famine that tries to come in and, and take from me. And I always now I get it. Things do happen when we mismanage money. But there's something about when you're under the covenant of God, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, and you're honoring God, you're serving God, that God protects you from stuff that shouldn't happen like that. And most often people tell me, well, you know what, I'm not tithing. And I just begin to explain. I'm like, well, listen, the Bible says that, man, when you don't tithe, you're cursed with a curse. You know, and it's not that God is trying to curse you. It's that you took the path of curse. And we got to change that. 
There's also, you know, the path of, that leads you to, to struggles. Maybe you're struggling with pornography. Maybe you're struggling, you know, with anger, with rage. But that, that, that path that, that leads you to sin is also going to lead you to self-hatred. And you hear more and more of that in the church. Christians that can't stand themselves. Christians that can't even look at themselves. When they see themselves, they hate themselves. They despise themselves. They have unforgiveness towards themselves. But look at what Psalms 1 and 1 and 2 says. But look at this. But how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Man, y'all have to be careful who you counsel from. You got to watch who you're speaking to or who's speaking into your life. He says, do not walk in that counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of what? Sinners. Now, listen, I know that we're called to reach the most far off gone people that don't love God and that are just cray cray and everything. Why? Because I was just like them at one point. But there is a difference when you start looking like them. Right? There's one thing reaching them. And there's another thing when you start looking like them. You start looking like them. You start talking like them. You even smell like them. And so he says, so watch out and don't get yourself so caught up where all of a sudden now you're back to your old sin. He says, so don't stand in the path of sinners nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law he meditates day and night in other words you have to remember that when you begin to just apply when you begin to take God's word when you open the word of God do you realize that God has the answer for every single problem you may have like right now maybe you have a financial problem there's an answer in the Bible for your financial issue Maybe you have marital issues right now. Well, guess what? There's an answer for marital issues in the Bible. Maybe you're struggling raising your children. Man, I don't know how to parent. Well, guess what? The Bible gives you principles and keys in order for you to raise up your children in God's way so that when they grow old, they will not depart from God. You know what? I can tell you this much. My wife and I said this this last week. We're like, man, at least we did one thing right. Man, our kids are awesome. They're not perfect. All right, they're not. They've had their good share of good spankings, let me tell you that. But, but, but I love the fact that I get to see my son preach his first sermon on Wednesday night. He took over the whole service, and, man, he blew it up. I was like, wow. 19 years old, already preaching a whole sermon. And, and let me tell you something. I'm proud of him. And, and is he perfect? No, I have to remind myself. But he's still 19. He's still a kid, right? And then I have my daughter. There's something awesome about really diving into God's counsel, God's direction, God's guidance, God's path that will lead you to great blessings. I promise you that. And so, uh, but, but, but once again, but God's not going to force you on his path. He's going to let you choose the path. All right? So right now we're in the month of July. We got five months left till Christmas. And today, I pray and hope that you will change your path, whatever that path may look like right now. Maybe you're on a path of destruction right now. You can change that. Today, if you allow God, if you give God permission, God will begin to change that path. Maybe you're in this path of, of constant negativity. God can change that path with you. Look at this. In Proverbs 22, verse 3 says this. It says, the wise see danger ahead and avoid it. But fools, everybody say fools. Oh, short up, Baba. Look at this one. But fools, they keep going and get into trouble. Huh? Have you ever heard that person say, you know what, your girlfriend or the dude that says, man, I, I, always, I always pick the wrong ones. How many have ever said that? Huh? Dan, I always, man, I, 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 attract, all the, I attract all the knuckleheads. I attract all the whatever. You end the, the sentence. Well, it's not that you attract them. It's that you just keep doing the same thing. You didn't learn from the last one, and you just keep picking the same thing, and you keep repeating the same cycle. So it's not that you keep, you just, they just keep coming to you. It's that you keep choosing them. And so he says here, the why see danger ahead, and they avoid it. But fools, they just keep going. They get into more trouble. The fool is the person who sees the danger and doesn't even care about their future. That's the fool. 
In other words, you know that you shouldn't be hanging around with this person. It's like people, single people. It's amazing how many single people in this church and every church, and I've seen it for 21 years, where I'll see someone who's on fire for God. They love Jesus. They're sold out. Then they start dating or they get married, and it's like the fire got put out. Like, what the heck happened there? How'd that happen? How did that happen? And it's, and, it's, and it's not because, you know what, because it's easy to just blame everybody else. But the reality, it's, it's coming to the place where you didn't do your due diligence to get the counsel of God, the wisdom of God in staying on the path that he created for you, that he designed for you. Now, how many know that even in your mistakes, God can anoint them? Aren't you glad for that? That God can anoint your mistakes and do something amazing out of it. But... How about be the kind of person, put that verse back up, please, that we are the kind of people that we have so much wisdom that we, when, when, when we see danger ahead, we avoid it, and we're not going to be the person that keeps doing the same old thing. Maybe you've been in debt for the last five years, but let's go look at your bank account, and let's look at your financial status, and maybe you're still getting into more debt, so you don't learn from it. This scripture applies to everything in life. Maybe at work, you're not the greatest employee, right? You keep getting in trouble. The boss keeps bringing you in. You keep getting write-ups. Why? Because you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, and you constantly get in trouble. That goes for kids too. You know, you, I got kids that always say, because you know what, I was a youth pastor at one point, and we got youth, and sometimes I meet with them, and they're like, man, my mom's always mad at me. They're always, I'm always in trouble. I'm like, okay, well, let's ask the real question. What are you doing that's getting you in trouble? I'm like, well, uh, I don't clean my room. Okay. Uh, I disobey my mom. Okay. Uh, I get bad grades. <laughs> okay. And, and, and can we just keep going or what? And then you wonder why. But. The wise, they see danger. For example, we just got back from Mexico, right? Uh, what day are we in? Sunday? Yesterday. Sa- Sunday, right? Yeah. It's bad. Sun- Saturday night we got back. No, Friday night. Saturday morning we got back. <laughs> it was Saturday. But we were, we were while well, we were um, uh, scoping out Oaxaca, we were going to some locations. And one of them was one of the most dangerous locations, which is the trash dumps. Now, in the trash dumps, about 147 people are being labor trafficked 24 hours a day seven days a week there and so um i wanted to go and film it so we had a film crew and uh and 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 i said we're gonna go in there and we're gonna go get some 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 revelation of what's taking place and i've heard about it but guess what but i also heard that it's very dangerous so while we were driving i thought to myself my god you know what this can be pretty dangerous uh, and I started talking to our driver, uh, our pastor, Dan, and I said, Dan, do you know anybody that knows anybody within this community of the trash dumps? Because I know it's dangerous. And, and so he's like, yeah, I know somebody. So he calls somebody, and that somebody calls us in to meet with him. We go into his office, and he says, oh, yeah. And he just begins to break it down. He's like, yeah, there's a mafia in there, and um, it's dangerous. They have literally burned down houses. They have killed people. I mean, it's pretty bad, Right. So we get him in the car, and we're like, okay, we're going. We're going to go film this thing. We get inside the trash dump community, right? And while we get in there, these people come out of nowhere, and they just start going off like, what are you doing? I mean, they started getting, and this is live while I'm on camera. So I got it on video, which I'm not going to show it to you, but I got it on video. Maybe if you're good, I'll show it to you next weekend. And it, it was, I mean, it was going down right there for the count. This one guy who was like, like these three little like mafia guys, one of them was like, you can tell he was all demonized. And he's just like this pacing back and forth and just like this, just staring at me. just And just like, I mean, he wouldn't stop. I mean, this dude was demonic. But thank God that wisdom said Okay, I can see the danger ahead, so let me call someone. So the guy that was in the car with us is someone who helps a lot of the kids of that community. Like he feeds them, he helps them. So the mafia people kind of like him. They appreciate him because that's, that's one less thing that the mafias have to pay for when it comes to feeding those kids. So this guy does it. So he made one phone call to the head mafia guy, and he said, hey, listen, I have a guy here with me. He supports our ministry, which, of course, I'm sending him an offering so that we weren't lying. And, uh, and he says he supports our ministry. Is it okay that we're in here? And then, 
one phone call that guy made, they called all the spotters. And let me tell you, we had spotters everywhere looking for us. And they finally said they have the green light. The moment they had that call, everybody got away from us. What if, what if you and I were a little bit more wisdom on the path of our life right now? What if we started thinking a little bit ahead? Because those who are wise, they see the danger and they avoid it. And when you avoid danger, you're going to set yourself up for so much blessing. But when you already know that you shouldn't be hooked up, linked up with her, with him, and you're not avoiding that, you are going to experience the fruit and the pain of that destructive, toxic relationship and that doesn't just have to be in dating that can be in business you can be hooked up linked up with the wrong business partner and let me tell you something it can kill you it can destroy you for years if you already know listen the holy spirit is inside of you he'll quicken your spirit you already know the red flags come on you know the word of god enough as you start hanging with people you start realizing like this may not be good but you know what we end up doing we give ourselves a little bit of permission and before you know it we completely let go of all of the boundaries and before you know it you're in trouble does that make sense are you guys hearing me so by god's grace we're alive we made it back obviously <laughs> it was amazing the full person sees danger coming and he or she doesn't do nothing that person doesn't care about their future and you have to be careful the path you choose will determine the consequences you're going to get and that goes for good or bad every single one of us it's the path we choose come with consequences we don't like to talk about consequences why because we're just too busy going down the path but every path has a consequence whether it's going to be a blessing or whether it's going to be a painful lesson Every path has a consequence. The only reason we don't change fast enough is because nothing's happening in the moment. And then when the moment comes, for some people, it's a little bit too late. But praise God that today we can change the path and get on the righteous path of God. Amen. God's not expecting you to be perfect, but he is, he is expecting us to be responsible. We got to be responsible with God's word. We got to be responsible with your life. Do you know that you're responsible for your own life? That's your responsibility. You have to take charge of this life because I'll tell you right now, this flesh is never going to lead you to glory. It, it just won't. It doesn't want to wake up and read the Bible. It doesn't want to wake up and pray. This, 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 this flesh, it doesn't want to be kind. It doesn't want to be generous. It doesn't want to be very giving. This flesh just wants to constantly lead us down the path of destruction. That's why it's so important for your spiritual development to continually be feeding your spirit, man, because your spiritual development is linked up with your physical lifestyle. When you are spiritually healthy, you are physically healthy. When you are, when you are spiritually healthy, you are mentally healthy. When you are spiritually healthy, you are emotional healthy. But when you're emotionally out of whack, it just means because you're spiritually out of whack. So you have to get an alignment, a spiritual alignment, and then God begins to put you back in that place because that spiritual development is linked up with the rest of every single. When you're spiritually healthy, you're financially wealthy. You are. Because the Holy Spirit will constantly give you counsel, will guide you, will lead you because you are on the path of God. Amen? If you want to be pure, you got to be on the path of God. If you want to stay out of toxic relationships, you got to stay on the path of God. If you want to be healthy physically, you got to stay on the path of God. Because I don't know about you, but it's not easy trying to live a healthy life when you have all the world just nudging at you every single day. But it all begins with a decision right now. When I was on that Colorado mountains, I had to make a decision. I had to go left or go right. But at the end of the day, I had to make a decision. I had to make one. And, of course, I did one. But let me give you a point real quick. Write this, down, write this down because today's decision will determine tomorrow's consequences. So direction, not intention, determines destination. Direction, not intention, determines destination. Let me say this again. Direction, 
not intention, determines destination. Have you ever heard someone say this? I meant well. Like, I didn't mean to do that to you. Like, that was not my intention. Yeah, but you heard me, bro. Well, you know I love you, Pastor Mauricio, and that was not my intention. Yeah, but it's not about your intention. It's about the direction that you chose to go with me that now has determined our final destination, my, my friend. Amen? So you can say, well, I had good intentions, but at the end of the day, it's all about where are these feet going? My intention was to never drink again, but you, sh but you were there. My intention was not to go hang out with this crew because I know they're always up to no good. Well, guess what? The intention may have been good, but your final destination was bad. So it's not about good. For example, this is kind of funny, but it's sad. Um, I remember years ago when I was working in ministry, um, you know, we, me, me and this other staff member, we, we were both horrible at, at like handyman work. But we had to fix something, and the ceilings are like 15 feet high, and uh, and so we grabbed the ladder, and and I told him, okay, uh, you want to go up, or he's like, no, you go up, I'll hold the ladder. I'm like, okay. So I start going up the ladder, right? We're going up the ladder, and I'm like, hand me the hammer and the screwdriver because that's what we needed. So I'm up there, and I'm and and I'm like, oh man, the screwdriver's not gonna work, and uh, I'm like, hey. Um, Where's the uh, screwdriver, the, I mean the screw gun? He's like, man, I don't know. I'm looking, well, I know where to get it. So I, I look at the hammer, and, and he's like, and we both look at each other. I'll just leave it up there. So I leave the hammer up there. I start coming down the ladder. He's holding it. Our intentions were good. My intentions were, his intentions were good. It's all good. Long behold, the hammer as I'm coming down, boom. Mind you, we're, we're both, we're not handy for nothing. You know, to this day, my wife doesn't let me do anything. It's like, it's like, shh, and then it's like, boom. <laughs> Nosebleed everywhere, just like, uh, and I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm just like grabbing whatever I can. I'm like, oh, forgive me. Oh, my God. Are you going to be all right? Oh, my. He's like, no, it's okay. It's okay. And so he's like that. So he's like, like gushing blood, right? So we finally get him cleaned up, right? He's like, it's okay, man. It's okay. I'm good. I'm good. And then he goes like this. <laughs> Missing tooth right there. Cracked his tooth. And you know what? He didn't know. So I start laughing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, you're not going to believe this. He's like, what? I'm like, half your tooth is gone. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> it was the most hilarious thing. Why do I say that? Because let me tell you something. My intention was not to hurt him. But what happened was the direction I took, the decision I made, ended up that destiny that he had. And today he still has no tooth right there. But... But I'm telling you, it's funny, but it's the truth. It's, it's so true that you can always have good intentions, but good intentions are not always God intentions. You have to be on God's path. And if his yes is yes, then it's yes. If his no is no, then it's no, but there's no in between with God. When you walk down that ladder, you bring everything down with you. Amen? You leave nothing up there because, man... You may lose a tooth, praise God. <laughs> so here, write this point down. The why see danger and avoids it. The why see the why see danger and they avoid it. There are consequences that you and I have to face when you don't look ahead. And I listen, as much as it sounds as tough to hear it is as tough for me to say it, because this all points back to me as well. There are choices and decisions that every single one of us are making right now that maybe right now you're not seeing the fruit of it, but eventually you will have to deal with the consequences of it. Listen, forgiveness has nothing to do with consequences. God forgives you. God loves you. But there's consequences with every decision we make. Oh, we got quiet in this Presbyterian church. Are you hearing me? And so the good news is that you still, I still, we still have the decision that we can make to get on the right path. And that can be in anything. Maybe, once again, it could be your health right now. It could be your family. It could be your marriage. It could be your business. Maybe you're doing things. On, listen, God says, I'll make crooked, straight, crooked, crooked ways straight again. We, we get on the path of righteousness. 
God, 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 listen, God will guide you. He'll lead you. You know, as a matter of fact, you know what? I love, I love the stories in the Bible because when you think about, like, the story of, of, of the Israelites, getting, they're on the path of God, right? And then all of a sudden, they think that, man, there's no more path. God, you left us here. We're all going to die. God's like, no, man, I know how to part the Red Seas. He, they just didn't know that that's the way God was going to do it. And you know why God went ahead and took them through that Red Sea? Because he knows that the enemy can't swim. Don't sweat it. You're going to get to the other side. And the enemy can't follow you. Amen? Not when you're on God's path. He's got your back. Amen? He's got your back. He's got your front. He's got your sides. And he has you in water and you swim. You know, many people always say, man, my life is like, it's like a marathon. I'm like, dang, you have, a, you have it real good. They're like, what do you mean you have it real good? I'm like, yeah, because my life's like a triathlon. You know, sometimes I got to swim. Sometimes I got to run. Sometimes I got to ride. It's crazy. But as long as I'm on the path of righteousness, I'm going to be all right. It's not going to be easy, but it is possible. It is possible. Give the Lord a big hand clap for that one. And remember, consequences is a part of our daily choices. Remember that, okay? It is a part of that. Look at this. Matthew 7, 13, 14 says this. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss. Listen, when this scripture was written, this wasn't written to non-Christians. This scripture was written to believers, people who say, I'm a Christian. So it's so much easier for everyone to walk the broad path, the one that has no boundaries, the one that has no limitations, the one the one that doesn't think about the future, that's the broad path. And he says right here, he says for, and it's easy to travel through that path that leads to the way of destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it, but small, everybody say small. Come on, this is where you got to decide what kind, of, what kind of path will I be? Will I be the small path or will I be the broad path? He says, but small is the gate and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads to the way to everlasting life. And there are few who find it. There are few. This is, he's talking to Christians. He's talking to believers, you and me. He's saying, man, right now, what path are you on? Are you on the broad or are you on the narrow? What are you doing right now? You see, it's, it's, it's easy to live the broad because, once again, it's just comfortable. Be careful not to be a Christian and be comfortable. If God has not challenged you in any area of your life, then maybe you're not in the narrow. Because in the narrow, it's always challenging. God challenges your character. God challenges your love walk. God challenges your marriage. God ch he will challenge it, but it's not to destroy you. It's to build you. Come on. He builds godly character in you. Why? Because when life gets tough, you'll have the character of God to sustain whatever season you're in. And so what what, what are some of the challenges right now that you have? What are some things in your life that you know that you need to begin to change the path on? What are some things? Just think about that. What's the path I need to change right now quickly because there's a consequence attached to this sucker right now. And you know what? You still have a chance to make the change right now. You can make that change right now. Say, God, I'm going I'm to, because you know what? It's not, just about, it's not just about a loss on this earth. It's about an eternal loss. It's, it has, it's linked up with my eternity. My choices are linked up with my forever, my eternity with God or not. It's hooked up. It's linked up. Everything I live in this natural life is linked up with my spiritual walk and the spiritual path that I choose to live every single day. Are you hearing me? This isn't to make you feel bad. This is to hopefully excite you and say, man, I got to make some changes. Maybe, maybe the path that you need right now is to, to have the path of reading your Bible. Maybe it's the path of, I should start praying to God. If I'm going to spend eternity with him, man, I better get to know him while I'm on this earth. How awkward is that going to be when I get to heaven and I forgot his name? <laughs> right? 
it, it, we, we have to get to that place. And, and, and once again, it's not an easy path, but it's a possible one. And uh, look at this, Proverbs 2.20, almost done, almost done quickly. Proverbs 2.20 says this, Thus you will walk in the ways of the good and keep to the paths of the righteous. We have to keep the path of the righteous. We got to stay the course. You have to, no matter how difficult it gets, no matter how hard it gets, you must stay the course. You know what? I have a good friend here today. The whole family, Les and Linganoza, I've known them for, gosh, I've known you guys now for 22 years. About 22 years, 21 years. And they're missionaries. But I can tell you this. I have known this family for 20 years, and they've been consistent staying the path. Staying the, it's rare to find people that are consistent that are just staying the path. And, and it's not easy being a missionary. And it's not easy, you know what, answering the call of God. It's challenging. You know why? Because when God calls you to do something, it makes you feel so uncomfortable. It does. But the reward is so much greater because, you know what, the very thing you do in this life, it's not just for you to, to have a story on the earth. It's for you to create a story that's going to go ahead and translate into heaven because in heaven there's going to be a huge award ceremony and they're going to testify about all the wonderful things you did for God on this earth. Do you know that angels right now are jealous of you and me? They're jealous. They're jealous that they don't get to worship God like you and I get to worship God. They're jealous that they don't get to witness and win souls. The Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. We need to come back to that place of wisdom with God. Come on, a wise person sees danger and avoids it. What danger right now are you walking on? It doesn't have to be sin. Come on, you can be in a dangerous relationship right now. You can be in, in a dangerous place of, of addiction, of pills. You can be in a place of danger where you're, you're, you're hanging out with this group that you would never hang out with to begin with, but all of a sudden you've just got comfortable and you're just, you have no more boundaries and you're just like, that's okay, it's, you know, God loves them. And you just start making excuses for the path that you're choosing. Today you heard it from me. God's path is narrow. It ain't wide. It's narrow. It's narrow. But it's awesome. It's life-changing. Three Ds that God, God works to move us in a new path. Ready? Three Ds. The first D is this. It's the disruption of our plans. That's the first thing. God, when you're about to change your plans or your path, here's what happens. He's going to disrupt. He's, he's going to disrupt our plans. The apostle Paul was commissioned and he had a, a, a command to go into the Roman Empire to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? In the scriptures you find that when Paul was on his way over there, all of a sudden the Bible says that the Holy Spirit forbid him stopped him in his tracks and said, you know what, this is where you stop. Unfortunately, I can't have you go to the Roman Empire. And Paul was like, but this is a good thing. Remember, good intentions are not God intentions. And the Holy Spirit said, I forbid you, you're not going there. And Paul had to turn around and walk the other way and not go to uh, the Roman Empire. Why? Because he was going to be killed. There was danger up ahead. Aren't you glad that he was wise enough to accept the conviction and the nudging of the Holy Spirit when he said no God right now is nudging some people telling you no don't let that no become so quiet and so silent that you can't respond to it anymore because you can't hear God's no you have to let him disrupt let him disrupt your plans the next D is this it's dissipation of resources. When God wants to move you in a new direction, he may also permit a season of experience of dissipation of resources. For example, I remember when I was working in the workforce and, and man, I come from poverty. So it was awesome because as God changed my life, man, life started getting better. I started making more money. I started having so much favor. I was being, getting two promotions. I had the option of Burbank Police Department, which you just can't get. That takes months to get in that. But I had favor with the captain of the Burbank Police Department. And then I had this promotion for being the district manager of all Southern California stores in the business I was working at. And let me tell you something. And God said, no, you're going to go into ministry. 
And I'm thinking, ministry? I mean, I was excited. We're making all this kind of money. I come from poverty. We finally made it $160,000 a year. Yay. And God says, no, go into ministry. But there's no money in ministry. <laughs> Just, there's no. And then I got paid minimum wage to start ministry. So I had to say no to Burbank police. I had to say no to the company that was already giving me my promotion. And I started as the janitor of our church. Dang. Dissipation of resources. But let me tell you why. It reminds me of Elijah. Because Elijah came in a season where God said, there's going to be a big famine here. And Elijah, but don't worry. I want you to go to the place called Cherith. And in that place called Cherith, I will provide for you. I will send ravens to bring you meat every day. And I will have a brook that will pour out water every day. So while you are in this place called Cherith, while you are making your way on the path of Cherith, I will provide for you. Sometimes God doesn't want you to figure out a way. Sometimes God is trying to develop your faith to trust him in the area of finances. And the word Cherith, the place called Cherith in the Hebrew means the place of covenant. God is wanting to make covenant with people in this church right now. He's saying, will you come to the place of Cherith with me? Because it's in that place where I will provide for you. It's in that place where I will heal you. It's in that place where I will feed you. It's in that place where I will restore you. But you must make a covenant with me, says God. Amen. The third D is this right here. Put that up. It's dissolution of relationships. In other words, let me be honest with you. There comes a time in your life where some relationships must expire. What do I mean by that? In other words, maybe right now you know you're in a toxic relationship. And you know what? You you know in your spirit, like, man, I just can't let go. I can't, but you're still in it. Maybe it's a tox toxic business relationship, and you just want to let go. Why? I don't want to offend them. I don't want to hurt them. I don't. Let me tell you something. While you're trying not to offend them, hurt them, you know what you're doing to yourself? You're on the wrong path. Abraham and Lot. It was Abram before Abraham. Abram and Lot, his relative. They were both serving God. They were both on the journey. They were both on the same path. But there came a, a time when Lot, man, he started kind of being ungodly. He was getting in the path of wickedness. And you know what Abram did? Abram heard from God and God said, hey, it's time to cut the umbilical cord. And he told Abram, hey, just go ahead and just show him the land. And and he said, okay. And Abram said to him, hey, Lot, you know, instead of us arguing and quarreling and fighting, instead of us backbiting and all this stuff that our, our peeps are doing, because Lot had his crew and his tribe. Abram had his tribe. Everybody was upset. Everybody wanted a piece of everything. So Abram said, you know what? Here's the wisdom thing he said. How about we just go ahead and we just part ways? He says, if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, you have to look at certain people in your life and realize we're both going to two different paths. I'm going this way, but you're going the other route, and that's okay. You have to have the spiritual maturity to understand that some relationships need to come to an end because it's keeping you from your destination. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.